Let's try this again. It wasn't quite working, so let's see if this works. It looks like it's working now. So we'll go ahead and get started here once more people join, and hopefully this is working, and we can get started, and some people can join, and we can kind of move on and see what we're going to discuss. We're going to discuss the epoxy today in the 661, 662, 663. So that would be gray, black, and white. We're going to talk about, it's working, I see somebody joining on. So it's, we're going to talk about ways of using it, best scenarios to use this product versus other products that we make, meaning like the um, Direct Metal 53 Series primer that we make. There will be times in which this would be the best one to use, and there will be times where the epoxy is the best to use. So we'll kind of cover what is the best to use. Hey, Chad, hope you guys are doing well. Um, while people are joining, I think I want to do this now while I'm waiting for more people. There's two cool things that happened today when I got the mail. Usually when we get mail sent to us, it's like a color match. Uh, and we're just like, it was so overwhelmed in color matches. I didn't want any more color matches. But today, today's mail was good. So the first thing I'll show is Randy, who's in the group and uses Tamco and supports Tamco in a lot of different forms, doing tumblers that he does, from uh, Forest Oak Artisans, his card here, for you guys who may want to check out his work because it's killer work. He sent me a bunch of things that I was not expecting today. So the first one he sent me, and I know everything's backwards, he sent me this Tamco Custom AF Cup, which is pretty dope, right? It's got my name on it, using all Tamco, so I was pretty stoked about that. And then he sent me, of course, wine. He sent me these wine tumblers, Tamco Army, Tamco Army, Yingling, Dragon, and then the other colors in them. So I was pretty stoked about that. I was not expecting it. I opened up the boxes and was like blown away that this was even sent to me because I was absolutely not expecting it. So Randy, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. I will be bringing them along with me to SEMA and uh, showing them off there disguising some alcoholic beverages in there while I'm, you know, talking and working, right? So again, today's live is we're talking about the 661 series. I'll wait for a little bit more people to join before I get started. I already talked about the cups. Thanks, Randy, for doing those for me. I really appreciate them. Something that very much excited me today because I was absolutely 100% not expecting it was I get a package in the mail, the second package today that wasn't a color match that I was stoked to get. Um, was, if you guys have seen this magazine, I'm sure you have, it was Car Culture Deluxe. And somebody who's in the group who uh, has used Tamco is the managing editor of the magazine. And he sent both of these copies to me. And I was very surprised to get them because I wasn't expecting what I was going to see when I decided to be a part of this build. I wasn't quite expecting that uh, the build would make it into this magazine. Um, and this is two magazines so far that it's made it into, and there will be a third. So what I kind of wanted to show really quickly was this build right here. So if you guys get this magazine, you'll be able to see it. I know everything's backwards, but he does a really good job of showing the products, showing everything that he did. And I think that what I'm showing you right now is the last edition, this is the second edition, there'll be a third edition. And I was really, really excited to get this just because when you go through the magazine, you get it, and I, I would actually appreciate you guys going to get the magazine just to give support to this for even talking about Tamco and the way that he did and discussing the products like he did. But he does a very good rundown of the products what the place that painted his car thought of the products. It was a custom color that I made for him based off of a formula that he got from PPG. Um, I took a formula, didn't know what it looked like, took the formula, adjusted it, altered it, and made it look like it does now for a, a job that he was doing um, where he named the color after his daughter. So I was you know, really, really happy to be a part of it. And when you look here, this is the original magazine where he shows the Riviera that he was getting done. It's, it's a 64 Riviera. And, you know, shows the label, shows the color, does the most amazing rundown on the product, explaining how well he loves the product, how great it is. I mean, I was amazed that this kind of information was given in a magazine about Tamco. You know, we've done a lot of different things that have been in magazines and maybe been on covers, but nothing really, honestly, that broke down how great we are to work with. You know, he really went down and just bragged about how great we are to work with and how great, you know, he was happy that I did the color for him and things like that. So please, if you guys do not have this magazine or do not subscribe, go get it. 
support Tamco, support Alan, who's the managing editor of the magazine, and read about it. It's two different magazines. One's not out yet. One will come out in, I think, a week or two. Um, one's out now, and you guys can read about the build and follow it. And then the following edition that's going to come out, which I believe would be the January edition, um, will have more finished pictures of the car so that you can see the color, things like that. And that's something that we do. And I know that this is a Tamco Tech on Epoxy, but just to kind of say, you know, I made a post the other day saying that we're going to SEMA and we're overrunning color matches and it's taking us a lot, you know, it's, it's been detracting from what we need to do. So yes, we do color matches. We, you know, it's, it's a service that we offer. We're good at it. It's one of the things people like about us, but I want to separate and differentiate the difference between a color match and making a custom color. So a color match is something where you send us a part and we have to match it. That takes time. Uh, if it's not sunny, it's harder. We only like to match when there's actual natural sun. It's completely different than, you know, using fake light source or being cloudy. Things don't look the same. We prefer natural light. Well, if the weather doesn't cooperate, that sets us back. If we're slammed, that sets us back. If we have a lot of mixed paint that day, that sets us back. So the difference, though, in the post I made the other day was... We actually make custom colors, something I do. It's something I absolutely am passionate about. It's something I do on a regular basis where a guy will send me a picture. He'll send me anything where he gains inspiration. He's like, I want this color. And anything you send me, you know, you could send me this magazine article and you could be like, I want that orange. I want that. I want it to look like that. And you know what? I can make it happen. Between me and Sean, we can make this happen. So those are things that don't take a lot of my time because honestly, I can knock them out pretty quickly. Those we're okay doing even when we're busy. We can kind of incorporate those in. It's the color matches where you guys send us things and they have to be, you know, spot on the money and that takes time. That's kind of what my message was about the other day. Don't inundate us in this right now because we're so slammed with SEMA, with SEMA prep and projects that we're doing and we're just, it's crazy. So this year's SEMA is going to be incredible. It's going to be the best display that we've had so far. But uh, I think you guys will all be happy. So if you guys are coming to SEMA, which a lot of you are, make sure to stop by, booth 15021. So I'm pretty sure I have a lot more people now who have joined. I was kind of killing some time with the different things I was talking about. So we'll go ahead and get started on the epoxy here now. Uh, let me just kind of flip through and see if there's any kind of questions that I missed. Just said a bunch of people were watching. Hello to everybody who said hello that I didn't say hello back to. I appreciate you guys watching this. Uh, let's see, any comments? I don't really think there's any I'm curious if the paint will work on my aluminum gun grips. It will. Um, so what I would recommend if you're painting aluminum, and we're gonna discuss that here now, I think aluminum is something that's tricky surface, it's a tricky metal, and I've discussed that it's a tricky, you know, like a metal that's hard to get adhesion to. If you're gonna sand it, clean it well, and paint it within 30 minutes of prepping it, then epoxy would be perfect. You could use the epoxy. Now, if you don't want to have to print epoxy, if you're trying to limit your mill build, if you're trying to keep the look of metal, then you could actually use our adhesion promoter, which would be designed to stick directly to metal and be able to work in that aspect too. So if you're wanting to keep mill build down and maybe keep the look of the metal, scuff it if you can, clean it well, adhesion promoter it within 30 minutes, and then you can move on. If you don't really care about mill build, if you don't really care about color, uh, then go ahead and just use uh, the, the epoxy. And then use the epoxy, let it sit for 12 hours, and then come back, and then, you know, go what you need to do from there. So let's see. Any other questions before we get started? No. So people say, didn't know that there was going to be a live. I discussed it this morning. I, I made an event. I've promoted the event three times. I said that we weren't doing one on Thursday and that we were doing it today. So the nice thing about doing a live is that you can go back and you can watch it anytime you want to. It doesn't really matter when it starts. So let's see. I just primered aluminum. You can take our 5310 series product and you can go over aluminum. No issue doing that. My biggest thing with aluminum, and this goes into what we're going to discuss here, is my biggest issue with aluminum is aluminum is something that basically self-heals itself is the best way to explain it. And I've discussed this during different lives. It's something where it will start to like resurface itself, reheal itself whenever you prep it. So if you're like prepping aluminum three hours prior and you're trying to go over top of it to gain adhesion, it's already getting to a point where it's not going to have the best adhesion. It's going to start to self-heal, therefore it needs to be reprepped again. I prefer that anybody going over aluminum goes over aluminum within 30 minutes. To me, that's like a safe point, 30 minutes, clean it, prep it, move on from there. Um, let's see. 
Does the epoxy require an incubation, or which some people would know as being an induction time? Our epoxy does not have an induction time. It's a one-to-one. -one. There is no induction, meaning that when you mix it together, or typically most paint companies will tell you, let the product sit for 30 minutes. DP does this. Other companies do this. They say mix in A and B, epoxy and hardener. Let them sit, stir them together, let them do their thing for 30 minutes. They're inducing themselves, and then you can spray it. In that time frame, things are the chemical things are working, you know, making everything that's supposed to happen properly happen in the 30 minute time frame. We do not have that time frame. Now, that said, the epoxy has a long pot life, meaning once you mix the two together, they don't work right away. It has a long time frame in which it will sit in a cup and be perfectly fine. So if you feel comfortable, if you're used to using an induction time of, you know, 10 to 15 to 30 minutes, then you can. If you want to mix A and B together one to one and let them sit in a cup for 30 minutes before using them, no problems. Will not function badly in any kind of a way. You can completely do that if you want to. And I do have some guys that say, you know, I'm used to doing it. You know, I'm, I'm prepping, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I just let it sit there, store it together, let it do its thing, and then I move on. If you guys want to do that and you want to, you know, do the induction time of 30 minutes, you can, but it's not required. So with Tamco, it is not required. You don't need to do it. Let's see if there's, no, okay, there's no other questions so far. So, okay, let's discuss it. So the epoxy, we make the epoxy in three different colors. We make it in white, we make it in gray, we make it in black. The white is 663, the gray is 661, the black is 662. They are a one-to-one -one mix ratio, meaning they're equal parts. If you buy a quart, you get a quart of hardener. If you buy a gallon, you get a gallon of hardener. You buy them as kits from us only. The gallons are $199.95, that gives you two gallons. The quarts are 60, that gives you two quarts. So you can buy them on the website how you want to. If you want to buy a gallon or if you want to buy them by the quart, you can. Just realize that when you buy a quart, you're going to get a quart of hardener and it's going to yield you two quarts. So you can get them, like I said, in three different colors. When you get them, this is how I like to break down epoxy. A lot of paint companies will tell you that epoxy is kind of like the be end all of what you need to do when you do restorations, when you do a lot of different projects. In a lot of cases, when it comes to what the standard products are in the market, that's true. Epoxy is what should be used on fiberglass. Epoxy is what should be used below the waterline, like on a boat or something like that, or in an airplane. Epoxy is what should be used on a long-term project. So if you're working on something where it's going to have to go out in the rain, you don't have a way of protecting it, it's not in a sheltered area, no climate control, it should go in epoxy. Now, the nice thing about epoxy is once you spray it, it doesn't really matter. There's no time frame in which you have to worry about, you know, what do I do? You know, it's in epoxy. Can it sit in epoxy for a year? It can. It can sit in epoxy for a year with absolutely any problems. Now, depending on your climate and where you lived, if you were to use our 53 series primer and you were to place it in that versus an epoxy, it would not be able to go outside and be rained on. It would not be able to sit long term without absorbing in moisture. And once it absorbs in that moisture, it'll go down to the metal, which can cause you to have rust issues. When you use epoxy, nothing penetrates epoxy. It's the one surface where nothing penetrates it. Why does that matter? Well, it matters depending on how long term you're working on your project. It also matters depending on where you live. So when you live in a climate like say Florida, for instance, where it's very hot, very humid, most days of the year, you have a product where it's going to be absorbing in that moisture. Your primers, your polyesters, your fillers will absorb in that moisture. That's the nature of them. That's what happens. When it comes to epoxy, this product here, it is something that does not, pen it, you can't penetrate it. Meaning water will not penetrate past this. It will not go past it down to the metal and cause you issues. Nothing penetrates it. A nice thing about the epoxy, something that I think is unique about it, now some places have the same time frame where you can actually go over top of it and not have any issue. Ours really and truly through all testing is a much more extended time frame than we even tell you. So what we tell you is that when you use the epoxy, it's a one to one, you spray two medium coats is how I wanna explain it. If you take our epoxy and anybody who's in the group watching right now and has sprayed our epoxy will realize that if you spray our epoxy way too wet, it'll instantly give you the look of fish eye. Is it fish eye? No, it's not. But when it's over sprayed and over applied, it will create the look of fish eye. That only happens when it's over applied. If you were to apply two medium coats, not super wet coats, you wouldn't have that happen. The next thing is, 
If you use a cleaner from us, like a 397 or a 398, and you do not flash that cleaner long enough, meaning you do not let it sit, flash the solvent off long enough, and you come back over top of it with epoxy, it will create the look of fisheye as well. It's not a real fisheye. It's not truly fisheye. It's happening based on the fact that the solvent on the surface of the metal has not fully evaporated. You're hosing on your epoxy, and it's literally floating on the surface, and it creates the look of fisheye. It's not really fisheye, it's what's happening. So these are two things to take into consideration when you're using your epoxy. Make sure your solvent is flashed off and wiped off prior to using epoxy. Make sure that you do not hose it on. If you apply it too heavy, it will not function the way that you want it to, and it will have the same look. I don't care who does it. I don't care the conditions of the shop. I don't care what gun you're using. I see the exact same results when the product is applied the exact same way every time. When it's over applied, it will not look the way you want it to, and it will have that issue. So anytime you over apply it, it's gonna have a fisheye look. Anytime you apply it before the solvent has evaporated off, it's going to have a fisheye look. If you follow those directions, and you don't apply it that way, and you flash it the way you need to, it will not have an issue. It will look the way you want it to, spray the way you want it to. Our epoxy has no build. So some guys will use an epoxy and it will have a build to it. Meaning, when you spray it, it'll be a one-to-one, -one, but it'll be thick and it will have a build. You have to spray through something larger than a one, two, one, three, and you can actually you know, sand it down and kind of get some build from it. Ours will not do that. And I see Tyler making the comment because I know Tyler's one of the people that I'm actually using to reference here from conversations we've had. If you hose it on, it will create, well, like he said, whale eyes. It's just, it's what happens. Don't hose it on, only spray medium coats and it won't happen. So when you actually go to use the epoxy, something nice that you can do is, this is what you need to do when you use it. Some people will say, hey, should you be able to spray the epoxy go wet on wet, straight to primer, straight to base coat, straight to sealer, and then move on. No. So I know that when you're using the DP series or using other people's epoxies, they will tell you that you can use their epoxy as a sealer. I have never agreed with that. I've talked to enough people to realize that every single time they're using their epoxy as a wet on wet sealer, the downfall that they're seeing is, is a dieback issue. Now, why do you have dieback? Epoxies are slow cure. No matter who makes it, it is a slow cure product. So whenever you're taking it and you're trying to accelerate it in a collision-based atmosphere, in, in, like in and out, in and out, in and out, you're trying to bang it out. When you're trying to do things fast, you're flashing, you're going over top of it with the next coat, you're going with sealer, you're going with base coat, you're going with clear coat, and you're doing it all within a very fast collision-based time frame. it does not like that. So whenever you're trying to take the epoxy and you're trying to you know, do two coats of epoxy, let that sit, then you're trying to come back and you're trying to use, say, like 53 series as a sealer, let that flash, and then you're trying to go to base coat and you're trying to go to clear coat, you're stacking too much product too quickly where it doesn't like it. It's not meant to do that. Epoxies are slow natured. They're slow cured. I don't really care whose brand it is. No matter what they tell you, that's what they are. They're meant to be slow. So what I've noticed is even with like the DP series from PPG, if you take the DP and you use it as a sealer like they tell you to, and you, flat, you go over top of it within 30 minutes, the telltale sign that you usually see by doing that is a dieback issue. Meaning when you come back the next day, you've stacked all this product on it in way too fast of a time period, you look at it and it's lost its gloss. You know, you have the proper conditions, you flashed everything properly, you did everything you were supposed to do and yet you're still fighting a dieback issue. Nine times out of 10, that's because you went over top of an epoxy in a very fast manner that you were not supposed to do. No matter what they tell you, it's not designed for that. So when you're using epoxies, let them sit. Most epoxies that you're going to use are going to have a window, meaning they're going to have a window where they have an extended period of time that they can be top coated without sanding them. Tamco epoxies, for instance, have a seven day window, meaning when you spray it, you have seven whole days to go over top of it with whatever you want to do and have adhesion. So if you wanted to sand it, I mean not sand it, but if you wanted to go over top of it with filler or glaze or primer or whatever it is you wanted to do for seven days, you can do all of that without scuffing it. You don't have to scuff the scotch bright, you don't have to sand it, you just have to clean it. Because in that time frame, you could have airborne contaminants that could give you fish eyes and lack of adhesion and things like that. 
So you for sure should clean it, but you do not have to sand it. If you tried to sand our epoxy sooner than 12 hours, it wouldn't sand. It is a slow natured epoxy. It would gum up on you. The, the sandpaper would gum up. It would not function the way you want it to. So you need to let it sit for 12 hours. In my opinion, it sands best at 24 hours above 70. But if you wanted to sand it, you could. I like the idea when you're doing a very high-end job of sanding your epoxy because it's going to give you the slickest surface for the next layer in the layer in the layer in the layer. So everything you do based on a sanded surface when it's very high-end work, high-end restoration, high-end custom, whatever it may be, when you do that, it's going to give you the best look because each surface is very smooth. Now, if you don't want to, you don't have to. You could let it sit for 12 hours, you could clean it, come right back to your base coat, come right back to your single stage, come to primer, body filler, glaze, whatever it is you wanna do, you can do after it sits for 12 hours. I wanna stress, do not top coat these products sooner than 12 hours. I, the soonest I would prefer, the soonest I see done that does function, depending on your shop conditions, the temperatures of your shop, would be three hours. That's the soonest I would ever want to see, and I don't prefer it. I have guys that do it, but I don't prefer it. 12 hours, let it sit, let's do a thing, let's, let it dry, let it flash the way it needs to. It still gains adhesion. You have that seven-day window, but it makes or breaks the product. It's not meant to be rushed. It's not meant to be accelerated. It's not meant to be forced into a collision atmosphere. It does not like it. So if you let it sit for 12 hours, you won't have issues. Someone says body work over epoxy or body work then epoxy. I am not a fan. Uh, people that know me know this. I am not a fan of body work straight to metal. No matter what they tell you, no matter what the bondo companies tell you or the glazing companies tell you, I do not believe that body work should ever be done straight to metal. It is to me the weaker link of everything. When you're using these products, they do not function the way they tell you they do. They will tell you that they stick to metal, but many people who will go over top of your work years down the road will tell you they do not stick to metal. They'll tell you that you have rust underneath those issues. They'll tell you all kinds of things. You should always, in my opinion, epoxy or 5310, 5311 or 5312, the metal, then do your mud work, then do your filler, your glaze, whatever it is, sandwich that in with epoxy, because remember, these products do not cross-link. Your fillers, your body fillers, your glazes, they do not cross-link. They need to be sandwiched between a stable product. Your primers, your epoxies are the stable product. When you use those to sandwich your work, you create stability. You create the proper foundation that you need to build your work off of. When you're using polyester primers, glazing fillers, you know, Bondo, any of those products straight to metal, you're literally building your foundation off of a sub poor product you should not be doing it it should be being based off of epoxy it should be being based off a high build high you know something a primer that's meant to stick to metal my tech information is not meant for you to go use for somebody else my tech information is meant to be used with tamco most direct metal primers are not meant for metal ours are most epoxies have things where you can go over top of them right after the fact ours do not so remember when you're watching these tech videos this is geared to tamco it's helping you use tamco not someone else's product so when you're asking, can you explain the benefits of using epoxy over bare fiberglass like a Corvette body? Does it lock down the fibers? Bruce, yes. So that's something I want to touch on. Epoxy, the best thing you could use on a fiberglass body, Corvettes being the number one fiberglass body I can think of, is that epoxy will force no moisture to penetrate it and get into the actual fiberglass. That's very important. When you're using fiberglass, Forcing moisture to not go into the fiberglass is a very important thing. Anybody that works on these bodies knows this. Epoxy will not allow the moisture to penetrate. It will allow you to have a surface that stays stable, that literally will seal the fiberglass fibers, lock them down the way that you want them to, and give you the foundation to move on from there. So what I, my recommendation is this, when you're doing a Corvette body, or actually any fiberglass for that matter, use epoxy, lock it down. Wait 12 hours, come back, 53, 10, 11, or 12, depending on what you wanna do, whatever color you wanna do. When it comes to fiberglass, the color primer is preference. There is no benefit over using one or the other. And lay that down, create your build based off the primer because the epoxy will never create that build for you with Tamco, only the primer will. So I recommend letting it sit 12 hours, coming back and spraying your primers over top of it, then doing your body work and blocking them down the way you want to. So the best thing you could use over fiberglass 
would not be 5310 or 11 or 12. It would be epoxy. Then after the epoxy sits, then come back and do the primer over top of it to get your build. And try to see if there's any other comments. So what are your recommendations when to use epoxy? These are my recommendations. Bare metal that you cannot get on quick enough, meaning it needs to sit for an extended period of time where primer is not appropriate. Primer will soak in your moisture like I was discussing before. If you're gonna be in a shop where you're not gonna get on it for several months, it's a hot, humid climate, it's something that's gonna get rained on occasionally, it's something that's going to sit for a long period of time before you do body work or get onto primer, that's when you need epoxy. So a lot of guys will say, well, bare metal always needs epoxy. If you're using other people's products, that is true. When you're using Tamco products, that's not 100% true. Our 53 series primers are designed to go straight to metal and give you killer adhesion. That's what they're meant for. But they're not meant to be rained on, to sit long periods of time. They're not meant for any of that. So if that's the kind of condition that you're going to be in, where you're undecided on how long it's going to take, you don't know if it's gonna to have to get kicked out in the rain, you don't know if it's gonna take you an extended period of time of months to get on the job, things like that, put the body in epoxy, then you're done. Because it doesn't matter how long it sits after that, it'll function the way you need it to. So if there's ever that question of what you can do, then definitely do epoxy only. Then go to your primer. That's my 100% recommendation. If you're in a shop where it's climate controlled, it doesn't really matter, then you can just go straight to 5310. You never need to do epoxy. But if you're gonna have that you know, iffy time frame or iffiness, go to epoxy. But let the epoxy sit for at least 12 hours before you go any further. Let me see if there's any other questions while I'm continuing, because I'm trying to keep up with them. When I say much bondo between products, I often get solvent soak. Still haven't figured out what it is best as a sealer over bondo. Now, D Donald, when you're saying this, are you using Tamco or using other people's products? Because you do need to sandwich your Bondo. Your Bondo work needs to have stability and be sandwiched. I don't know what you're using that is giving you the solvent soak that you're discussing or what the products that you are using is, but that should not happen. That should not be some kind of a downfall that happens. I don't know how soon after you're doing the, the mud work that you're actually sandwiching it. That might matter as well, because remember, you know, they need to gas off. They have solvent that you add into them and in, in stuff well. Let's see. People saying, hey, so bare metal epoxy body work, filler epoxy, then prime and block question mark. It depends on the product. It depends on the project. It depends on your expectations for the end job. If it's bare metal that will sit for an extended period of time, epoxy it. If it's bare metal that will not sit for an extended period of time and you will be doing whatever you need to do on it rather quickly, 53 tenant, it'll save you time, it'll save you money, you can be sanding on it right away. It's a good product for that. But if it's going to take you a while, skip over to epoxy. If it's not gonna take you a while, stick with the 53 series primer. Let's see what else we got. Um, what about wet sanding 5310 when direct metal? Doesn't matter. 5310 can be wet sanded. It doesn't matter if it's direct metal when you're doing it. If you're sanding on it and moisture gets on it, and I discussed this in the live that I did on 53 series products, kick it outside in the sun. By your wet sanding on primer one time is not your issue. It's an extended period of time. When your primers are sitting and being soaking in moisture on an extended period of time, that's your issue. If you're going to wet sand your body, kick it outside in the sun, do whatever you need to do, let the water evaporate out, you're good to go. It's not an issue. It's an issue when it's an extended period of time, constant humidity, constant moisture, constantly being rained on. Those are your issues of primer being used and not penetrating. When you're doing, you know, blocking, wet blocking or wet sanding 5310 or 12 or whatever it is, there's no issues. 5311 for rust inhibitor, then epoxy and 5311 if going to be a while. So something I want to discuss. On the 5311, it is the only... 53 series primer that we make that has a rust inhibitor. When it comes to the epoxy, every single color of our epoxy contains rust inhibitor. White, black, gray all contain the same amount of rust inhibitor. Our 5310 products do not do that. There's a reason for that. Part of it is when we designed the product to begin with, the customer that we designed it for only wanted black, so we only put it in the black. Number two is it increases the cost of the primer to put it in everything. When it's not needed, 
you're increasing the cost of primer for no necessary reason, so we've not done it. Most people who are doing these projects tend to want black. Therefore, it's in black when it comes to 53 series for rust conversion. When it comes to the epoxy, like I said, it's in all colors. So that's kind of the reason why uh, it's only in, I can't tell how long it's been. It's not telling me for some reason. So if somebody tells me here, I don't know why it's not telling me, but tell me how long I've been doing this for because I, I like to not go over a period of time and I can't quite tell. I think I'm right close to 30 minutes. And I don't want to go quite over 30 minutes. So 5310 is my hero as a sealer, as a filler, sands so well quickly, doesn't come to paper. That's exactly true. That's a nice feature of 5310. Now, if you were to use epoxy and you were to try to sand on it with before 12 hours, it would gum up your paper. The epoxy is very slow curing, very slow drying. It does not want to be sanded. Prior to that, it won't function well. It doesn't like it. So it's been right at 30 minutes. So I'm going to, you know, cut this close here pretty soon. I think that I've covered most things that need to be discussed with the epoxy. Uh, there's no induction time. It's a one-to-one -one mix ratio. If you want to do an induction time of 30 minutes, I mean, of 10 to 15 to 30 minutes, you can. It's available in three different colors. Um, it's meant to go on bare metal where it's going to be an extended period of time. It's going to be something where it can get rained on, different things like that. It's not Thursday, guys. I said I'm not doing the live on Thursday because it's Halloween and a lot of people will have, you know, things with their kids and things like that. So I didn't want to do it on Thursday. That's why I'm doing it today. And by the time Thursday comes and I'm leaving Saturday for SEMA, I have a lot going on. So I figured Monday would be easier to do the live. And I did announce this, guys, this morning. I can't help it. You don't pay attention. I announced this morning I was doing the live multiple times. So... The nice thing about a live, like I said before, is you can go back and you can watch it whenever you want to. So even if you can't watch it now, even if you came in late, you can watch it. Randy, I know that you just told me that I've been on for 30 minutes. I did discuss your cups in the very beginning. You weren't watching, I don't think. So if you watch the very beginning of the live, you'll see that I gave you a shout out for what you sent me today. I'll do it again. Uh, let's see. What grit sand for adhesion on top of epoxy? Um, 220 would be a good grit, 180, 20, and then you can go from there. Whether it's going to be primer, whether it's going to be filler, whatever it is, 180 is perfect. Remember, when you try to sand on top of epoxy too soon, it will not sand. You'll know when it's ready to sand based on how it acts. If it acts like it can sand well and it can powder well, then you're good to go because the epoxy will sand and powder perfectly when you do it if it's ready. If it's not ready, it'll start clogging your paper because it's not ready to go. So it will sand nicely, very, very nicely on the epoxy when it's ready to go. Do you have to open the epoxy before doing body work? No. For seven days, you can do whatever you want over top of it. Body work, filler work, primer, paint, whatever it is you want. Twelve of seven days, go over top of it with whatever you want. Truthfully, our product has been tested to go well longer than seven days, but we like to stay very stick on our, strict on our tech and tell you a certain time frame, so we stay within seven days. Seven days will give you all the time frame you need for perfect adhesion for anything over the epoxy without sanding it. No sanding and it will have perfect adhesion. If you apply filler rage over epoxy after 12 hours, less than seven days, how does it adhere without sanding? Chemical adhesion, yes. So if you go in that time frame, like I told you, 100% perfect adhesion. If it's like eight days, nine days, you're like, oh, the window closed. It's not going to stick. It will stick. It, trust me, it'll stick. We are very you know, sticklers, like I said, on the seven days. But I have it where our documentation shows us it sticks for 14 days. Uh, we have documentation that shows us it sticks for 28 days. But we don't talk, we don't talk about that. We promote the seven-day window because we like to stay very strict in our tech and what will work. I have a 1977 project. I don't want to go to bare metal. Do I go 5310 or epoxy, then 5310? You go 5310. You want to use 5310 for what you're doing on that particular project. There's no reason to go with anything else. If it's going to sit outside, though, and it's going to get rained on, it's going to be in the elements, kick it to epoxy. If that's not going to happen, stick with 5310. The reason I like 5310 in a lot of cases over epoxy is the epoxy doesn't like to be rushed like I was discussing. Well, if you guys want to be sanding and you know moving on quickly in a quick manner, you can't do that with epoxy. It does not like it. You have to do it with the 53 series to be able to be that fast. I like using 53 series as a pro I mean as a sealer. I mix it four one to two. It lets me in. It lets me get my job done faster. The epoxy 
Make sure you do not over apply it. Two medium coats, no more than two medium coats. Make sure that when you clean the metal that you are letting the solvent completely flash off and wiped off or it will pool on top of it and create the look of fish eyes. If you over apply it, it'll create the look of fish eyes. Um, if you, what else? There's different things. Those are the two basic things there. If you over apply it and you don't let the solvent a flash, you will have fish eye. It's not real fish eye. It's duplicating the look of fish eye for that reason. If I have to come back to it over seven days, do I have to open it and recode it with epoxy? Here's a trick. If you're coming up on your time frame of running out of your window, come back and spray another coat of epoxy. And that will instantly give you seven more days. I should have mentioned that before, but I'm mentioning it now. So if you say you're on day six, you're coming up to day seven. You're like, ah, crap, I'm not going to get on it. I'm not going to be able to do what I need to do. Don't really want to sand it. You know, I need another week. I want to prolong this. Then you can literally take another coat of epoxy, a medium coat. Do not over apply it. A medium coat of epoxy within that time frame, spray it over top of it. You will instantly have seven more days. That's a way to do it. Because the epoxy doesn't build high and it's more of a sealing epoxy, then you can go over top of it, like I said, with an extra coat, like a third coat in that time frame and have your adhesion, have perfect adhesion and not have any kind of issues. And you won't have too much mill build because it does not create a lot of mill build. It's a very quick product. It's meaning like the very like, basically like a sealer, like our epoxy will spray through a one, two, a one, three, a one, four max. When you start spraying through like a one, five, one, six, one, seven, one, eight, ain't gonna like it, won't like it. You need to spray it through the same kind of thing you would spray like a base coat through. The epoxy is a sealing kind of epoxy, low viscosity, sprays very slick, very nice, very nice product to actually spray, works and functions very well, but don't spray it through a large tip. If you spray it through a large tip, you'll spray too much product. It won't function the way you want it to. There's no reason to do that. So I'm pretty sure I answered all the questions. I know I've been doing this for at least about 40 minutes now. So I'm gonna keep these pretty short. So I think I'm gonna end it here. So any other questions, uh, let me know through you know messages, reply here and they can be answered after the fact, things like that. Um, to kind of recap, thank you Randy again for all of the merchandise you gave me today. You sent me three different cups. Here's a third one. Very cool, very much appreciated. I will be bringing them to SEMA and showing them off. Um, in the very beginning, I discussed the two magazines that we are in card culture deluxe two different ones that we were in there's gonna be a third one coming out please buy them if you don't already have a subscription to them please buy them check it out support the magazine for even discussing tamco in the very extremely positive way that they did very much appreciated for that i'm pretty sure i answered everything here uh we're not going to do another live this week next week i leave saturday for sema so we will be doing lives all next week multiple times next week through the entire week from when we get there, I'll be going live when we're setting up. I'll be going live when we are, like the entire time. We will be making you guys feel like you're at SEMA even when you're not at SEMA because I know a lot of you guys can't go and we will be bringing SEMA to you. Best way to explain it. So if you guys want to you know, t partake in it, answer, ask questions, feel like you're there because you can't make it, I will make it like that for you guys next week. I appreciate the support. Thank you very much for everything you guys do. Telling your friends, telling everybody about Tamco, it makes a world of difference to us. It is why we are where we are right now. It's what grows this company, and we all appreciate it very much, Tamco. Again, I appreciate it. Have a good night. Stay safe. Have fun. Watch the World Series. I'm rooting for the Nats. See ya.